So it's been about five years since Apple gave us a dedicated operating system for the iPad back in iPad OS 13. And since then, the iPad has gotten a bunch of new software updates, new features, new use cases, and now we even have new hardware that makes the iPad feel much more like a laptop, at least physically. So now, five years later, the age old question, can the iPad Pro fully replace your laptop? Let's get that question answered because I'm in a perfect position to do so. Let's get into it. So just like most things and most conversations that we have in day-to-day -day life, this is a very nuanced situation, right? For some people, the iPad Pro could be your end-all be-all and the only laptop that you're ever gonna need. And to others, the iPad is just kind of like a playful, larger iPhone that is used for content consumption and nothing else. So in this video, I don't really wanna get to the point where I'm telling you which one to get, but I will kind of walk you guys through all the different scenarios of when you would wanna use an iPad Pro versus a laptop and vice versa and give you all the information needed to make an educated decision at the end of the day if you can only purchase one of them. So let's get right into this and talk about first, which is gonna be all the performance and hardware capabilities of the iPad Pro. So I'm currently using an M4 iPad Pro, the 13 inch variant with a Magic Keyboard, the new Apple Pencil Pro with one terabyte of storage and 16 gigs of onboard unified memory, giving me probably the best or almost the best case scenario from an internal hardware spec standpoint to replace a full on laptop. Yes, you can get the baseline version and it gets you eight gigs of unified RAM with 256 gigs of storage, but I wanted to really put it through its paces and really finally go full tilt with the iPad this year and go with a one terabyte version to really understand and if this iPad can fully replace a computer because I've been using my iPad Pro or a iPad Pro for the better part of six years. I've always had some sort of Mac OS computer alongside my iPad Pro, but for the most part in most of my work especially, I have been using my iPad Pro for about six years. So from a sheer raw performance standpoint, the iPad Pro can handle pretty much anything you throw at it, whether it is that simple content consumption or a Word document or going through maybe Google Sheets to use your personal finances, or even all the way on the other side of the spectrum, like rendering video games, you know, coding, being able to actually create 3D graphics. And finally for myself, which is a lot on the YouTube side, which is thumbnail creation, as well as video editing, video exporting, and then finally, all the administrative tasks that go with uploading a YouTube video, like working alongside YouTube Studio in Safari. And since I have the 16 gig of unified memory version, that does give me a 10 core CPU, which is four performance cores and six efficiency cores, and also gives me a 10 core GPU to handle all those intensive tasks. So again, from a pure and raw power standpoint, it can handle everything that your current MacBook Air can handle, or maybe more so because as of right now and as of recording this video, there is no M4 MacBook Air as of yet. And I always like to say about the iPad Pro especially that this is the best one trick pony out there because of the software limitations, quote unquote, it allows you to kind of hone in on one single application and work on whatever you need to work on without getting distracted with a bunch of different windows and other applications and notifications. But that is going to be a nice segue into the software limitations that iPadOS presents because as somebody who's used it every single day for six years, I have some decent insight as to what works, what doesn't, and then what you can do but adds a few more steps compared to Mac OS. But before we get into that, a quick word from our sponsor, Paperlike. The Paperlike screen protector was actually the very first accessory I ever bought for my original 2018 iPad Pro. It absolutely changed the way I use my iPad, giving me that real paper feel right on my screen. And it's been almost seven years and I still make sure that I have one for all of my iPads. I recently got the new iPad mini 7 and I knew I needed to throw a paper like screen protector on there because it just adds a whole new dimension with how I engage with the iPad mini. Paperlike's NanoDot Tech gives you the natural resistance of paper, letting you take neater notes, draw with precision, and even makes the sound of pencil on paper. Combine that with the new haptics of the Pencil Pro, and you have a match made in heaven. It is made for creators and doers. It's perfect for artists, designers, students, or anyone who wants the real paper experience in their digital workflow. And with its micro bead tech, Paperlike keeps your screen clear and near glare free, making it as beautiful to look at as it is to write on. Not only do they give you two Paperlikes on there just in case you mess up, but they also are so confident in their product that they offer a 100 day satisfaction guarantee. So if you're ready to fall in love with writing on your iPad, give Paperlike a try with the link below. And now back to the iPad mini. 
So now this is an iPad Pro and it holds that Pro moniker. So there are some Pro level applications, both from a first party perspective, like Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, as well as Photoshop from Adobe. And there's also some third party applications that need to replicate that, like LumaFusion, which is my video editor of choice. There's also things like Affinity Photo, which competes with Photoshop. There's a bunch of other different applications like Swift UI and to be able to code in the Apple ecosystem that really make this a Pro level computer because of all the things that it can handle, both from a computer standpoint, but then also as a tablet. Because remember, the iPad in its essence was a touch first interface to be used with your finger and then eventually with the Apple Pencil, which we'll get to in a second. But if you do wanna use this as your main computer, there are some different software, I guess, workarounds or limitations that you have to go through because what the iPad is trying to do here, and it sometimes bottlenecks itself, is that yes, it's a touch first interface, so it takes that into account, but then with the Magic Keyboard and then adding the trackpad and adding things like Stage Manager, it's trying to become also a desktop class kind of situation and experience, and sometimes it doesn't know how to handle itself. For example, being able to move files from application to application, it works most of the time, but then sometimes it doesn't, and there's no rhyme or reason as to why it doesn't. Other things that take into consideration is that things are buried deep into menus, you do have to quickly go into it, so there is some kind of learning curve that you have to go through. Now, can you get from point A to point B on whatever you're working on, whether it is an Excel sheet or a video edit or something in your coding platform? For the most part, yes, yes, you can get to that point B. It's just how you get to point B that really matters. With macOS, people have their shortcuts, their systems in place, their softwares, you know, everything that goes into it when it comes to going from point A to point B. And with iPad, if you just go completely over and you want to replace macOS, you will need to learn how to do it in a different way with different applications, different workarounds, the different file system. Maybe you have to convert things that weren't converted before but eventually you will be able to get to it and it's just a matter of do you want to learn how to do those things or are you just happy with Mac OS and then of course the iPad Pro does have something like stage manager like I mentioned which does allow you to extend to a secondary monitor and have some sort of essence of that continuity or that Mac OS situation because again from a power standpoint this supports up to one 6k 60 Hertz monitor which is absolutely unheard of with that Thunderbolt 4 port that it does have equipped on there but again, Stage Manager is very different from your traditional kind of drag and drop windows and manipulating windows. It has gotten light years better compared to what we got with iPadOS 16, but Stage Manager, there's something about it that still doesn't quite feel like it's there. Yes, you can have up to four different windows open, you can have a picture in picture in YouTube, you can resize windows almost infinitely now at this point, but because this is iPadOS, which is also a different version of iOS, the applications first, they act like an iOS application, then they enlarge themselves to an iPadOS application, but then when you're inside of Safari, it tries to become a desktop class browsing experience. So again, there's a lot of things happening here that make it kind of convoluted and confuses the operating system, which ultimately confuses the user. But again, if you do want to get used to it, you can get used to it like I have and end up enjoying the iPadOS experience that much more. So I know that up to this point, it feels like I've been ragging on the iPad Pro, which is kind of unheard of for me because I love the iPad Pro. I love everything about it. I love what it stands for. And I love using it way more than using a traditional Mac OS laptop or even something like the new Mac mini. But now let's get into the superpowers of the iPad Pro because again, like I keep mentioning, this was a tablet first before it got all these beautiful bells and whistles to try to compete with the actual laptop and like netbook market. One of the biggest things that the iPad does have over Mac OS is the fact that it is a touch first interface and it is fully touchscreen, right? Especially now with the new M4 iPad Pro and that tandem OLED, the beautiful display, the 240 Hertz touch sample refresh rate that makes it feel super fluid on top of the 120 Hertz Pro Motion, it's just an amazing experience overall. Whether you are somebody that's just a terrible designer and just likes to use it for sketching, somebody that uses it for note taking in class or in boardroom meetings, or somebody that's a designer or an artist creating these masterful artworks inside of something like Affinity Photo or something like Procreate, you can do pretty much anything as a blank canvas with the iPad Pro. So the screen combined with the Apple Pencil Pro and iPadOS 18 with features like hover and the haptic feedbacks that you get with the Pencil Pro and being able to get that barrel roll sensitivity, which is something we haven't seen before in any type of stylus or digital pencil, pretty much makes this thing the most user-friendly Wacom tablet you can find out there. That combined with the versatility of now slapping a Magic Keyboard on here and making it look like the best laptop ever created is something that we don't have because depending on your situation, it could be a standalone tablet that you use your, with your finger. It can be an infinite canvas that you can use with your Apple Pencil Pro, or it can be a laptop when you slap this keyboard on it with your trackpad in that keyboard. So the versatility of the iPad Pro, in my opinion, is completely unmatched, whether it is inside of Apple's world or outside of that. And then when it comes to portability and battery life, it's that same essence that, again, this is a tablet first, so it was made to be portable. And this thing is ultra slim, especially the new M4 13-inch iPad Pro at 5.1 millimeters in thickness. 
every single time I hold it as just a tablet, it's absolutely unheard of. It's, it, I, the feeling that I get with it is something that belongs in the future. It just feels like it actually is what Steve Jobs wanted, which is that big pane of glass to be able to read your news articles and be able to consume content, but also be able to get some work done on the couch without needing to get your workhorse laptop out. So from a portability standpoint, while I will say that something like the MacBook Air is extremely portable in its own right, and of course you have the built-in trackpad and keyboard and screen all into one, there's something about being able to just have the iPad Pro in tablet form and stick it in a bag with maybe some sort of slim case on there. And then when you do need to really power it up and really get some work done with a keyboard and a trackpad, you can also carry it with a Magic Keyboard, which at the end of the day is about the same weight and size as that M2 or M3 MacBook Air. But if you do go with the 11-inch version, it is a much smaller package. It is much more portable. The reason I go with the 13 every single time is because I use this as my main laptop and I just like the extra screen real estate and the extra footprint of the keyboard itself because I think the 11-inch keyboard for me personally is just a tad bit cramped. And then with battery life, it's insane how good this battery life is. I'm getting a consistent 12 hours of battery life while doing intense work. The standby time is absolutely amazing, especially when you have it removed from the Magic Keyboard. The Magic Keyboard tends to drain the battery a little bit when it is in standby, but if you have it just by itself, this thing will last for days on end. You come back to it and you've only lost a couple of percent of battery life. So. Battery life overall is absolutely amazing, especially with the new M4 iPad Pro. But the ultimate question to me, especially for most people is, should I get something like a MacBook Air or should I get an iPad Pro with all the bells and whistles? And for the most part, I'm going to steer people towards a MacBook Air. And the reason is because of that cost to performance ratio or that cost and value proposition, right? As of right now, I believe you can get an M3 MacBook Air, the baseline version for I believe $850 from Amazon, which is Again, that computer is amazing. And for what you get for $850, 256 gigs of storage, eight gigs of RAM, obviously you get the keyboard and the trackpad and the display and the speakers, and everything is gonna be right there in your package, ready to go. Versus with an M4 iPad Pro, especially the 13 inch, I think right now you can get it on Amazon for $1,000, but then you gotta get the $300 Magic Keyboard and that $100 Apple Pencil. I am using Amazon prices on Apple's website, it's a little bit more expensive, but you start to see that you will be spending a little bit more, about $1,400 to $1,500 for a base version of the M4 iPad Pro. And if you wanna get the one terabyte version like I did, you're spending even more so, closer to $1,800 when you package it all together. So that is why I steer people towards a MacBook Air if that's what you're going for and that's where you're kind of like comparing it when it comes to apples to apples. Because that's normally what people compare this to. They compare the iPad Pro to the MacBook Air when I actually think they should be comparing it to something more like the 14 inch MacBook Pro, but that could be a video for another time. So it really comes down to your personal use cases and your nuanced use case and finally what you're willing to spend for that value. Because yes, the iPad Pro, while more expensive, gives you a lot more versatility in terms of what it can do and what it can be for you. Like I said, digital note-taking device, content consumption machine, ultimate computer when you need it to versus the macOS laptop, is it is what it is. It is a macOS laptop that's gonna work as it's intended to work and it's a good price and it can get most of your work done. So my ultimate recommendation is find out exactly what type of use cases you're gonna be using, whether you're a first time student, whether you're a professional in maybe the Microsoft Office space, or maybe you're a coder, or maybe you're a designer, figure out what your use cases are, figure out which applications the App Store has, because that's another superpower. Because of the fact that this is iPadOS, there are millions upon millions of applications that you can use for your iPad, and there's usually an application out there that'll work for whatever you need, versus the macOS App Store, while you can actually download things directly online, the Mac App Store is way, way smaller than the actual app store. So for me, my iPad Pro will always be my main form of computing. I love using it, it's a lot more fun. I love the fact that I can open it up and it feels like a futuristic device every single time that I use it. And when I need to get serious work done, I jump on my iPad because I can't get distracted by other things happening around me with a bunch of different windows and notifications and videos that are popping up everywhere. So being able to just have this one trick pony and have that sheer and raw power to export video files at intense speeds, has made my iPad Pro an amazing computer, and I'll continue to use my iPad Pro as my main computer unless something else comes around. As of right now, my current setup is my baseline Mac Mini as kind of like an at-home desktop, and then my iPad Pro as my laptop around the house as well as with traveling, and then of course, my iPhone. But that is how I use my iPad Pro as my main computer. Let me know in the comment down below what you think. I know iPadOS has its limitations and people like to hate on it, but at the end of the day, somebody's limitations can be somebody else's superpower, and that's what I always tell people, so don't knock it until you try it, and take advantage of Apple's return policy. You get 14 days to try something out and return it, no questions asked, so if you are in that situation, by all means, definitely give it a try if you are thinking about going all in on the iPad Pro because it is just a more fun device overall. But that'll do it. 
Leave a comment down below what you think. Would you use your iPad Pro as a main computer? Have you used it as a main computer before and has it worked out for you? Let me know, I'm always curious to know. And if you made it to the end of this one, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you wanna watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody. Be sure to check out Paperlike down below as well. Thank you to them for always supporting our channel. Until next time, everybody. Peace.